Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, we are from GovTech. Today we're going to share about an experiment that we're currently doing. Uh, it's called building a device farm. So let me introduce ourselves. So both of us are engineers here at GDS Hive. GDS stands for Government Digital Services. And before I start to go into our device farm, I'd like to explain what does, uh, we belong to these teams called HEADS. So it stands for Hive Agile Testing Solutions. So currently, uh, this office they are in now is called the GDS Hive. And we, the engineers here actually created the, uh, this team so that we can simplify and streamline the whole testing processes throughout our project lifecycle. So from the left, you can see that there's like green, white, and blue. So each of them actually stands for a certain stage of testing, like functional testing, security testing, and load testing. So where did we get this inspiration from for this experiment? We tried to read a lot of online articles and realized that uh, Facebook, uh, Google, and Amazon, they actually have their own device farms to actually use the engineer quality applications. So now I'm going to show you the very first version of our device farm. So it looks just like that. Uh, we use some old or donated devices that we found in the office that are used by other teams for their projects. And we found random Mac minis, uh, laptops, and desktops that is unused. Then we start to like build our device farm part by part. Uh, we did not place it purposely beside the fire extinguisher, but uh, I mean, in case it starts fire because of the, all the devices, so that is pretty convenient. Yeah, but it just this is just a joke. It won't explode, hopefully. So far, three months it hasn't. And yeah, so this is a list of hardware that we currently use. Um, I, would, I would like to show this first so that we ca I can show you step by step how we attribute everything together. So we have this router, this search protection power strip. And we have two Mac Minis, two desktops, and a lot of hubs, and one Synology NAS, and a lot of docks, and server hardware to actually run a VM so that we have enough memory so that it doesn't run it and ensure that there won't be any memory issues when we run the parallel testing. So yeah, this is, I'm gonna show this three times to explain this properly, so this is the first time. Uh, so first of all, this is how we hook up everything. So we have all the devices that is hooked up to the USB hub and hooked up to each individual device. And each of the devices is actually connected with a USB client. So this client will then all forward all the traffic to this VM that is living inside this server hardware so they can run all the parallel testing. Um, that's why I'm gonna show this three times because it's pretty complicated right here. So, and then the software configuration for now that we use to carry out our testing environment is we use this thing called the Rapster framework that was written some time ago, which uh, is, consists of robot framework, APM and Selenium. So we combine all of these framework to actually carry out all the parallel web and app testing through all the connected devices in the network. And we also use a CI-CD tool to actually help to, uh, to trigger all the test builds as when or when we wanted. And also, the lastly, the USB server software that helps us to remove the need to actually connect all the, single, all the devices into a single machine. And next. So uh, let me start with you. Uh, let me explain to you our journey and how we actually come about building this device farm. So at the start, we actually just have a very simple Mac Mini with three Android devices and one iPhone. And every single thing was actually done in this setup. And it's also just with just very simple robot framework and APM. Then we started to ask ourselves some questions because you know uh, we can't just rely on Apple for everything, right? So we decided to explore other OSs like Fedora and Windows. But then uh, Windows gave another kind of problem, which uh, like, okay, uh, I mean regular updates and regular blue screens. So we decided to go with Fedora. Then, uh, so first of all, we had a Fedora and we replicated whatever environment we, can, we installed onto the OS X into the Fedora. After that, we packaged it into a VM. Uh, so, we distributed this virtual machine disk all throughout all the different uh, the machines that you see, like the laptops and desktops and whatever hardware we could find. Then throughout the installation process, we realized that all these VMs during the transfer process can get corrupted or even just when importing the appliance itself can have a lot of problems. So we got ourselves a Synology NAS and of course you need a powerful router just in case the auto backup system actually fails. Then the next problem came, uh, you know, we have more devices. So with more devices, we need a lot more wires. So for example, uh, there's like a different kind of micro USB cables and each 
micro USB cable actually comes with different quality. Uh, some of them just doesn't, pow uh, doesn't provide reliable power. Some of the tests will just break uh, because the wire just can't provide enough uh, power over during the testing process. Hence, we decided to like, uh, standardize everything. So we bought a hell lot of docks by the same person. So we know that if it goes wrong, yeah, it's this brand's fault. So we mainly got these three, like USB-C, micro USB, and lightning. So now, we will, now I'm going to explain this again. So how do we end up like this? Why not we just buy a lot of hubs and connect to a single machine and then connect all the phones to it? That should work, right? But yeah, so these are some of the events that actually happened that trigger this to become like this. So first of all, we wanted to add more devices. Previously, I mentioned that it was just four devices, right? So we're like, okay, let's add more Android devices and see what will happen. So as we add, add more devices, we realized, yeah, there's, we ran out of ports. Of course, um, a laptop has a very limited amount of ports, so we tried on the desktop. But even though on the desktop, we realized that some of the tests couldn't run properly. Like when you try four or five devices, uh, maybe one or two will fail. It's not, it's not because that we, our test script or the environment is wrong. It's rather that it just couldn't draw enough power from the machine. So we decided to get powered USB hubs. But with that, we tried to get some OEM hubs that is unbranded to save money. But after three to four days, all of them fried itself. And like all the power adapters spoiled, everything just stopped working. So we like, okay, let's spend some money and and then we follow this GitHub link over here, which there was, there's a group in America that actually tried a lot of USB hubs and figure out which are the brands that is reliable and can actually count on them. So yeah. So the second thing that happened that uh, there was just a few seconds of blackout in this building someday. And then so, uh, there, during the power restart, there was a certain level of power surge. So just in case we've got this surge protector power strip, this is like 80 bucks. Okay, anyway, so this is to protect our devices from actually getting fried or like a fire risk. So then the third event that happened there was that, just now I mentioned, right? So even though it's resolved the power issue, we realized that it's still not enough to actually power all the devices. So we were wondering, how, how come is it that it, it, it's happening like this? So we tried to ex, uh, experiment with all the different configurations. So for example, we could try four phones, five phones, six phones, and, all, and when I say by these four, five, six, it doesn't mean same phones, it's try with different brand, different configuration. Then we realized that uh, certain maybe older models will require more power, and if you test on a tablet, it requires more power. So you have to distribute the power uh, equally such that it, uh, a certain device don't suddenly draw too much power and break the entire test. So we actually overcame this uh, problem by having this USB uh, server software, it's called like USB over IP, so that you can spread all your connections over the network. So how it works is that, so with three, these three co devices connected to this, this machine, it has this client software that tells this server that three devices is actually connected to here. So you just need to state all the IPs to actually point them to the right, right server, and in this Proxnox, uh, VM uh, hypervisor with the VM, you will actually understand that each, you will, will, will trick it into thinking that each of them is actually connected to him. So at the end of the day, uh, there will be no power issue because each of these machines actually can provide enough power reliability to at least four devices. Then uh, recently uh, we had a revamp because uh, we need to move our setup to a more secure environment and after tearing down, yeah, it looks like that. So after shifting it, now it looks much nicer. And so I can explain this again. So okay, so the top level is all the power rack. We had these two power strips and actually it's running out of space. And we purposely seg segregated them into different levels so that we know how to maintain this when something goes wrong. So the top levels are the, are the power supply followed by the USB hubs. Then the next level is the desktops, followed by the mobile devices, and two Mac minis over here. And this laptop here is, is just for backup, because as you can see, there's no space for keyboard here. And we can only squeeze one keyboard with a mouse here. And yeah, this is pretty much for our hard hardware set setup. And we also have iPhones connected to the Mac minis, because yeah, only Mac minis can recognize iPhones somehow, you know. And, then after that, 
we just hope that it doesn't break. So far, this setup is still maintaining well after three months. After that, we actually developed uh, our, our open source software to actually manage this whole farm as a whole. So now I'll pass on to Zoyang to actually explain how to actually maintain this through software. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Uh, so I'll go through the software because everything is enabled by the software. How it works is this. So we use 100% open source software to power the screen recording of the mobile devices as well as the connection to the devices itself. So this is what it looks like. You know, here is just a screenshot of the four devices and our users can be located anywhere in our internet zone. As such as connectivity, they can actually control the device using their keyboard and mouse interact with it. So on like a remote desktop, but on more devices. So this software is actually agnostic to the mobile device. The mobile device doesn't know that it's being controlled. So how is it able? So we search and scan the whole entire open source uh, Linux library for all the repositories and look for uh, things that are similar to uh, DNC. So if you know what a DNC is, then you know what things are. So uh, everything is just done in Linux, everything is just a file and, uh, should, and just you power them through uh, relevant commands like using your Android SDK. So the first software is called XPRA. So this is just exposing the uh, your Linux window over HTTP, or in our case, we use HTTP with web sockets. Yeah. Then the next piece of software is actually called uh, SCR uh, CPY, so Screen Copy for short, in short form. So Screen Copy is a, is a utility on GitHub, you download it from there, where it allows you to expose your uh, ADB, using ADB to capture screenshots and uh, take user input from the keyboard and mouse actions to control the phone. So, this is the summary of how you can get it to work. So, uh, this is this slide shows our head framework, what it is composed of. So, very reusable uh, industry standard components that a lot of mobile testers are using. Uh, if you are using Java with Selenium, just need Java. So, you need that first. Then, followed by using your Python pip to install the robot framework and the supporting libraries for mobile test automation. After that, uh, we use Node to get APM installed and, uh, and then if you are doing web automation, you need your Chrome or your, and your Chrome driver followed by uh, Android SDK build tools and uh, if you are using a specific version of Android like Android 8 or 9, then you need to get those versions of the SDK installed. Uh, Windows just need to get Visual C password build tools that is required for APM, then uh, S code for Mac. And screen copy as I mentioned earlier can be installed using Brew or other which the better way is to install it from, uh, from source. So the Linux specific stuff, so as far as possible, make this stuff highly maintainable. Maintainable in the sense that anytime we need a recreate environment, we can just go in, get a blank VM or blank machine and recreate it within like an hour or less. So how we do we do that? So we get we base we take our setup from all the basic repo setup that's available uh, distribution of flavor, such as uh, what Poppy mentioned, Fedora, or she works on Ubuntu as well. So just need to install uh, a few packages. Uh, I will skip the so this slide doesn't include like the, the basic things such as your development SDK, but you need USB utils on top of all those mentioned. You need to enable your file permissions. I'm sure you're going to run your mobile devices as root, so you need to uh, change the device's file permissions so that a standard user is given access so that in the CIC environment will be able to run run your access of mobile devices through USB. Then, as mentioned, in the, as shown in the screenshot, you need to install your X11 stuff, XPRA, screen copy, and uh, MPEG is a, is a movie, it's a, it's a codec, so you need that as well. And for all the different bug fixes, you need to each uh, Linux label, just go to our website uh, to see all the details and source code. So everything is available there, you can take a look and try it out yourself. So, uh, this project, we really want to support the community, that's why we are here tonight, and uh, all the source code is freely available. So just check out this link, 
just search our GovTech SG uh, GitHub page. Uh, GovTech does have an open source policy and our project is there as well. And uh, some of the experimental stuff are on my uh, GitHub as well. So just go to Young link. So, without further ado, uh, I'm sure you want to get a demo and we have something prepared for you right now. So, let's take a look at that. I uh, hit run ready. Yeah. So right now we triggered the build through our CI platform. And so there's nobody going to the mobile devices, everything is being live uh, to the user and uh I'm ready my desktop go. They are going to uh, just get get a setup. Wait, wait, wait. My, my my chrome like crash. Oh. Eh, where's the chrome uh? Oh yeah, accidentally press hide. Hey, where did you go? Mm -hmm. Where did you go? Hmm? It's just it's full screen. Full screen, ah? Uh. Is it? No way. <laughs> it just suddenly disappeared. Okay. So um. No, not this one. Oh, okay. It just suddenly disappeared. That's why it was just oh. there. Mm. No, I don't want to reopen yeah, everything. Okay. Hey, yeah. So, the technical difficulty. We have a I will now show you the our SPRA which the, the thing just died. Oh. Suddenly. A, the, cr the, cr the, cr yeah, the chrome died. Oh man. Oh no. Nah. Can you just uh, Right, so this is the SPRA console. So this Oscar. is essentially your VNC client, but everything is available through the web. So uh, and the user just needs to do is go to the right URL and they can connect to a mobile device directly. And you can see right now, this is the screen, live screen capture of the mobile device and uh, it's running the audio test from our CICD platform. Yeah. So this is uh, running on the Xiaomi A1. And you'll notice that every single device actually runs at a different pace. So, uh, Yeah, so um, let me trigger the build and show you what it looks like. So basically, when you run through every through web sockets, everything is just a port number. And um, it's just running from the default out of the box config. So when we run from our CIC platform, what happens is we have scripts in the back end to connect the mobile device and synchronize the, the window and all the, and all the ADB commands. So what, why, why this is good is because, say, you need to do maintenance on your device, right? So all your engineer does is uh, go to the device, do your software update, plug the device back in, our back-end script will just pick up the ADB device and just use, and will connect the screen back online. So this actually helps us to reduce the maintainability. Yeah, because uh, these are real devices, and real devices have uh, physical issues like the cables and all that. So this helps us. If you have a large setup of say 15, 20, 30 devices, it's really difficult to you know, troubleshoot in our experience, right? Difficult to troubleshoot these issues. So I'll trigger our, our pipeline one more time, just since it has completed. And I'll try to show you these are actually each of the individual tabs is actually a mobile device. As you can see. So we run everything through uh, our pipeline and in a moment's time
So why it takes a while to get a test set up is because uh, we need to run a robot framework and robot framework will then uh, pick up the all the our own Python script will pick up all of the devices that are attached to the machine or based on the UUID. So if you are familiar with Ethereum, you need to specify the desired capabilities to run your test. And from there, uh, Python script does one thing. It just uh, captures the, uh, the UUID, sends the APM, sends the relevant uh, ADB commands uh, through APM. So what we need to, in addition to all those things that I mentioned, we also need to write a script that will check all the individual Linux processes that are running to check whether the device is still in a test mode or not. Because if not, you won't know actually when the test ends. So only after each of the uh, Python commands that is, or the robot framework command that is sent, whether the process, when the process ends, then at the very end, then can you kill the APM server. Uh, and then from there we can then retrieve the report for the mobile test automation. So the benefit of running in parallel is uh, one test takes about two minutes, two to three minutes depending on the, the speed on the phone. And when you do it in uh, eight or ten devices, it still takes the same amount of time, it doesn't take longer. Uh, so that really uh, gives you dividends in terms of like, the, the time taken to run your test. So we are running a demo on, uh, on the SLA One Map app. And what I did just now is just to uh, do a basic map search. So yeah, so the test is completed. You can see that we have uh, the build log is available in our CI CD pi uh, pipeline. Then everything is available to the developer to, to troubleshoot. And we have the report in, in the artifact format. Like that. So every single device is picked up by, by the framework will be labeled. And from there we can see uh, where the error occurred on a, on a particular mobile device. Yeah. So like for example, uh, there's a problem searching for on this map, so and the element didn't appear, so you get that, that error screenshot. So this is by default robot framework uh, feature with APM. So you get this, and from there of course you can uh, do you know, your own anal analysis of how the test went. So this test passed, so there's no, there's no error, so there's no screenshot. And as if some of you know robot framework, everything is just keyword driven. So this is uh, how easy it is to, to run a test. So we go back to our slides. Right. So, uh, just some info since we are the sponsor for the, the brand new sponsor for the talk. So where we are today. Uh, so hats is a recommended tool in our government. So we are doing this not just for the fun of doing it, or just to prove something. We are here to actually build this capability in our core government. As you know, and if you're a tester, you know that your time and your effort and energy is very, it's a limited resource, right? There's only so many testers you can have in a project. And we want to encourage government agencies to test early so that we don't just wait at the end and try to fix all the bugs that we can have. And if you're a mobile tester, you know that the the mobile device uh, landscape changes every single month, uh, every six months, you know. And 
the, the popular devices today may not be the popular devices tomorrow, right? So uh, we also helping agencies to like, keep track and they ask us, you know, what are the most widely used devices? So we are helping them to get the testing on board the devices. And we don't want to waste the effort. Say so you buy a mobile device today, it becomes obsolete tomorrow, right? So we want to share the resource of the mobile devices. So having a device farm actually makes a lot of sense. So let's say you've got a development time on six months, then you can do a test for during the agile development phase, right? So uh, you can actually share the devices, and from there we can uh, get dividends from there. And of course, what we just showed you today is just a snapshot of where we are today. And this accumulation of work for the last six months. Uh, we have a roadmap for security testing, low and performance testing, and uh, overall, as mentioned, to improve the quality of these services that we uh, deliver to our government agencies. So yeah, so that's about it for our presentation by GovFed tonight. So if any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me, our uh, hoping, and we're happy to uh, engage with you all in the community. And also, uh, I, I did mention that we're also uh, hiring testers and that box and that, so uh, we're interested to just come talk to us. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, any questions? You may have to uh, uh, take questions right now. Uh, I'm mostly curious how long uh, was the whole process from when you started to reaching the level of maturity you have now. How long did it take you? So I'll let you know of a, a secret and that is this project really started at Scumworks. Yeah, so uh, we did not get uh, any approval or funding for this project. So what we did, we, we just started very small, right? We had uh, a few quality engineers that were, were thinking out loud, thinking out of the box, how can we uh, make testing easier. So that was a really, really the, the very fundamental question. And we see that there are barriers to getting into this space. So we try to tackle it from a very simple, low cost manner. So we just like utilizing open source and all that. So we built this thing really every single feature or every single uh, fix to the issues that we had was done in very small stages. Not only recently that um, we, we think we are confident enough, so that last month we are confident enough that there is really potential and we went on to uh, build in, in, in uh, GDS, GovTech, we call it a, a squad, so we started a squad to uh, get this thing rolling and then we started to pitch this to like, uh, you know, our GovTech stack conference and to get feedback and all that. So it's really, I would say, the last six months that we really started uh, taking this as a more full-time thing. You know. Uh, you, you talked about that you're using the Mac Mini to um, connect the iPhones. Have you looked into running them on, on Linux machines or on VMs? So the funny thing is, um, this is very expensive, so the, the, the test setup actually works on, at least connecting the device actually works on Linux for the iPod Touch, but somehow uh, after the iPhone, the large screen iPhones, right? So after those devices which couldn't work on, on Linux. Yeah. So uh, something Apple did there to, uh, to prevent that from running. So this is an industry-wide problem, so we, we checked with uh, other people who have uh, while building this and it's the same issue. So really open STF is a it's also a cumulative right, uh, software package that contains everything you need to get started in a way. Uh, why we did not take that approach is because we already had something going and we want to uh, we have a philosophy here and our team that we want to build things from the bare minimum. So the, the GitHub project is called Bare Bones Device Fund. So uh, we, we believe that we keep things simple then it's robust and we understand every single line of code that goes inside. So if there's something changed in like your SDK, Android SDK, we, we know where that line that problem that line needs to be changed. Yeah. 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 
questions from the back side. Have Yeah. 